Hey, beautiful beasts. Today we are talking about prenatal prerequisites you should be looking for in your personal trainer or your fitness instructor. Stick around. I am Ksenia Thurgood and I am an ex-professional dancer and multi-certified body nerd. True story. I'm also the creator of La Technique. And based on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Mohawk, and the St. Lawrence Iroquoian peoples, this land was traditionally a meeting place. And I'm hoping it will continue to be a meeting place, even though these videos are in the meta world. And today we're talking about a subject that is really important to me because I'm someone who's suffered from multiple miscarriages. I started studying movement for pregnancy because I wanted to ensure that I was moving correctly so I wasn't hurting myself nor the developing baby. So it irritates me highly that over 50% of the population are menstruators or women and that there are specific certifications for prenatal and postpartum movement, but it is not a prerequisite for any personal trainer nor any health facility to ensure that all of their instructors and trainers there have that certification and yet they allow them to instruct brothers and postpartum brothers. It makes me irate. I digress. Let's get right to it. There are a couple of things. First off, when you meet this personal trainer or a fitness instructor for your class and your prenatal, the first question you should ask them is, do you have prenatal certification for movement or prenatal exercise certification. That certification exists for a reason. I'll say that once again for those in the, in the back. That certification exists for a reason. So then right away you know if they do not have it, get out of there. Or you take that own class at your own discretion. Or you train with that own, with that personal trainer at your own discretion. Number two, they should ask you right away, have you had clearance? from your obstetrician for movement because there are some birthers that have contraindications to physical activity that has to do with their uterus, their blood pressure, their heart rate, and their cervix. Number three, they should ask you what trimester you're in because the type of movement you do changes for every single trimester. While we're on that conversation, first trimester, there are multiple contraindications for movement, which is why I myself personally no longer train nor recommend anybody to train during that delicate time. That said, the caveat to that is physical movement is wonderful for prenatal. It helps prepare you for the actual physical labor, which is work and as well as healing afterwards. And there's some other things as well I'll get into in another video. If you're interested, let me know. And this going on, I need to nurse my kiddo. I taught this morning and I didn't nurse him before. And then I shot this because my partner took him out. Because if any of you have kiddos, they know once they see you, game over. So um, this is what's happening today. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, if that personal trainer is not certified, does not ask you if you have clearance from an obstetrician for physical activity, does not ask you what trimester you're in, leave, run. Okay, walk, walk, walk quickly, don't run. Walk, walk at a moderate pace, let's say. After all of that is done, number four, that instructor or personal trainer should give you specific modifications right away. There's a couple of things you need to know before you even start moving in the room, besides all the modifications physically that they're going to give you during the class or the session together. How to make this crystal clear. This is gonna be harsh, yo. If that personal trainer or fitness instructor is not certified, myself personally, I'm like, bye. You don't know what my body needs at this point in time where it is a delicate situation. It's not just me, it's another human being. But if you're like, you know what, I'm okay, I'm okay. If they don't ask you if you have clearance from your obstetrician, that's the first freaking question. If they don't 
ask you what trimester you're in to even know how to instruct you for the type of movement, that tells me right away that, that even if they have certification and they don't ask you that, their certification might just be surface level. Uh, if you can get to an Iyengar teacher, freaking awesome. And then if they don't give you any modifications before you even start the session or the class, bye. You're done. Thank you very much. Do not pass go. You do not collect $200. You do not get my hard earned dollars at all. If you're curious about contraindications for first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester movement, please come on to my website. Everything's there in the LTD membership and it takes you through every single trimester, prenatal and postpartum. If you want to take a live virtual class, I teach them every week and I do give prenatal and postpartum modifications. Once again, I do not recommend first trimester prenatal coming to take any of my virtual classes, nor doing any of the videos on my website. It's just not worth it to me. And it's, if you think of this time in your life, it's like the pregnancy, yes, it's huge, but it's like this on the huge timeline. I saw D Dr. Shereen Idris said that once and I'm like, that makes sense. So don't stress out. I use Iyengar principles, 16 weeks. That's it, just 16 weeks. You can still do other kinds of movement. Walk, that is the best physical thing you can do at, during the first trimester. Thank you so much once again for watching. I hope you found this information practical. I want birthers, menstruators, and women to feel empowered in your bodies, to know what's the best thing to do for your body. It's yours, it's the only one you got. Look after it. Speaking of, until next time, keep that pelvis neutral. Bye.